by the grace of Christ, let us read now from the New Testament, from the Gospel according to Mark, the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 9 and verse 14. The Gospel according to Mark, chapter 9 and verse 14. And when Jesus came to the disciples, he saw a great multitude around them and scribes disputing with them. Immediately when they saw him, all the people were greatly amazed, and running to him, greeted him. And he asked the scribes, What are you discussing with them? Then one of the crowd answered and said, Teacher, I brought you my son, who has a mute spirit. And when, wherever it seizes him, it throws him down. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. He answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. Then they brought him to him, and when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed foaming at the mouth. So he asked his father, How long has this been happening to him? And he said, From childhood. And often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. <coughs> Jesus said to him, If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help me. Help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people were running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, Deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. Then the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly, and came out of him, and he became as one dead so that many said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he had come into the house, the disciples asked him privately, Why could we not cast it out? So he said to them, This kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. Then they departed from there and passed through Galilee, and he did not want anyone to know it. For he taught his disciples and said to them, The Son of Man is, betray is being betrayed into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And after he is killed, he will, raise the th he will rise the third day. But they did not understand this saying, and were afraid to ask him. Amen. There are moments when man reaches complete weakness and weakness leads him to despair and disappointment. <laughs> but perfect despair and disappointment. What can I do now? He says. So this man had a son here that we read. He may have been his only son, maybe not. But at some moment, some time, most possibly because of his sins, because that is how it usually, what usually happens, this child was found demon-possessed. And very often, as the father saw that this son being taken up by the devil, being convulsed and gnashing his teeth and, and, and withering, other times, he'd see him, uh, grab him, throw him into the fire or in the water to destroy him. And he could do nothing. Things are difficult here. Very difficult. And I repeat, as we go on, things will become even worse and more difficult. And this isn't a message of despair here. And disappointment but it is a message of hope and blessing for the church of Christ though 
For the whole world, this is a message of despair. But for the Church of Christ, this is a message of glory, of joy, of peace. Why? Because though the days would be evil, and in the past for someone to get a job, it was rather easy. But now it becomes more and more difficult for someone to hold on to his job. It was a certain thing, a sure thing. But now it becomes difficult. For a family to be kept in Christ, when I believed it was relatively easy, but now it's difficult. For the children to stand in the presence of God, of all age, from the younger to the older. Once it was an easy thing to do, but now it is very difficult. And things will become even more difficult. With the result that for there to be peace between the man and woman in the house, once it was an easy thing, now it will become all the more difficult. And we still do not know what is in store for us due to the course of things. For that reason also God through his word as he teaches us, he shows us this man was, who was in despair. That I can't do anything. My child is lost. It's dying. Who will set my child free? Who will free me? Who will help my family? Who will bless my family? Is this the course of my family? For us to be afflicted and, uh, and tormented by the devil? But as back then, the demon possessed were a great number among men, especially of the people of Israel. And furthermore, it was the time of latter rain. And for this father, this father heard that there is someone that is called Jesus, and he is a Nazarene. And he answers, answers men's petitions. And he doesn't answer the small, but he answers the small and the big petitions. And he doesn't only answer the small and the great petitions, but he answers impossible petitions as well. Because for him, nothing is impossible. All things are possible. Do you believe this? All things are possible for Jesus. And so he did something that we have to do as well. He decided to approach Jesus. And the word of God says, draw near to God and he will come near to you. I do not know what he believed, how he believed, what was his faith. I do not know in what spiritual state he was, how his family is, how, how his personal life was. But I do know that he made the decision being led by his despair to draw near to Jesus Christ just a bit more, to go closer to him. But it, when he drew near, he saw his disciples because the Lord was up on the mount where he transformed, transfigured himself before James, uh, John, and Peter. And there he re revealed himself only to those three that he is the son of the living God in the presence of Elijah and Moses as well. The disciples could do something because Jesus had given them authority. But a few things cannot be done or solved by any disciple. There are generations and there are kinds and kinds of demons that have greater and greater authority. And there are problems and problems. My dear brethren, let us never think that today we are okay. Because the word of God is not only for today. It is especially for tomorrow and the day after that. For that reason, the word of God is prophetic. It is divinely inspired. It is without lie. It is true. It is the supreme truth. But the Lord... Even if he wasn't 
he would come close to his disciples. For there is the place where God appointed for the dwelling of his only begotten Son. And that is among the disciples of Christ. Among the disciples that God chose and gave to Christ. And if for some moment it is not, he will come. It will come. So the question is not not is not if he will come. The question is, are you a disciple of Christ? If you are a disciple of Christ, if your family is a, are disciples of Christ, the question is, have we made the decision to be disciples of Jesus Christ? Within the church, there are no teachers. There are no rulers or leaders or bosses. There are only servants. But furthermore, there is one teacher, hallelujah, who teaches but those who are disciples. And today Jesus Christ comes, I believe, as a teacher to teach you, to teach us, to teach me. And we want Christ to teach us. And only He to teach us. Because we want to be disciples of Christ. Because that is where God has appointed for Jesus to be glorious. And He will come. And for if for one moment he's, He stepped away, Christ will come again. And if I made mistakes, serious mistakes... Christ again will come for me. And if I did not go so well under the training and admonition that God had brought in my life, Christ will come again. He will come for me. Hallelujah. For that reason, let us wait for Him with trust and hope in Him. He is the one who corrects what is lacking. He is the one who restores the wilderness, the des destroyed places. He is the one who makes the wilderness a watered land and garden when he comes. He is the one who destroys the works of the devil. He is the one who, for him, nothing is impossible. My brethren, do we believe this? It is so serious for God to give us this so we can understand, so we can trust Him absolutely and say, the Lord is coming to me. He is coming to you to destroy the works of the devil. To correct and to guard and to protect and to lead and to reveal and to speak and to set free. He is coming. And he did come to this man. He saw the disciples discussing with the scribes and Pharisees who were saying, you can't do anything, and who do you think you are? You're heretics, etc., etc. They were reproaching and mocking the disciples. Don't mind that, my brother. What we care about is for Christ to come. They may tell you whatever they want. They may say anything they want to us. Let them speak. Let them say whatever they want. <coughs> but make sure that you don't lose your trust in the fact that Christ is coming. Whoever says, let him say whatever they want. But they grieved the disciples. They were saddened because when they come and doubt their authority and the Lord's authority, their cleanness and their sanctification, they felt sorrow in their heart. But Christ said, let him say whatever they want. What matters is that the Lord is coming. Your help is at hand. Your help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. And when we know, my dear brethren, that the Lord is coming and we have certainty in our heart, then despair leaves, sorrow leaves, disappointment leaves, and the joy of of yearning comes and can I tell you something people will disappoint us and we will disappoint other people 
because we are all people and no person is worthy of his word. For that reason, do not be sad that I have disappointed you. I'm just a man. Don't be saddened by this. Don't become indignant. Don't complain. I am just a man. You are just a man. We are just people. What matters is that the one who is coming will never disappoint you. Hallelujah. He will never disappoint you. And the Lord visits his disciples. He says, what are you discussing with them? These vain discussions. And we thank God because this afflicted man jumped up and spoke. He said, Teacher, I brought my son who is greatly afflicted. And we are all afflicted by the devil because of him. I brought my son to, his, to your disciples. And I requested that they cast out his demon, that they give a solution. But they could not. Hallelujah. They couldn't help me. Man wasn't able. The disciples were not able. Your brothers and sisters are not able. No one was able to help David. No one was able to help this man. And many times, my dear brothers and sisters, no one has been able to help me. And even more times, I have not helped the ones who have asked for this. Because we are people who are imperfect, who are weak, who carry our own sorrows, our own anxiety and worries, our own problems. And so I can say it the way that God says it. We carry our own cross. And let us not forget that many times we can't help anyone because we have this huge plank in our eye and doesn't let us see. So what are we are waiting for now? What can I expect from you, my dear brother? And what can you expect from me? What is, what is it that we can do? We can only pray, lest, lest Christ comes and helps you. But now we will no longer pray like this. Now we'll pray differently. We'll say, Lord, give us this absolute trust that, and, pr and, and prayer that David have, had. My help comes from the Lord who made the heaven and the earth. Not could he come, will he come, he may come. I'm weak, yes, but I do not pray as a weak person. I pray to a God who is almighty. And when God sees this faith, that Christ says, if you had faith as a mustard seed, you would say to this fig tree, be uprooted and be planted in the sea, and you tell the mountain, be moved and fall into the sea, and it would happen. This is the faith that God is talking to us about, which is not a human achievement, but it is a gift of God. And we want God's gifts today. We want Just imagine this, my dear brethren, if one man has such faith, but imagine if a family has such faith. But furthermore, think of this small church here. If God would give us one such faith, then... Christ would say these words all things are possible with God and all possible are with him all things are possible with him who believes make us such believers lord all of us whoever wants this let him lift up his hand we want to be such believers lord make us so for nothing to be impossible for you and nothing to be impossible through the name of Jesus Christ in us hallelujah and we do not say these things, my dear brethren, to comfort 
to give human comfort, but we say these things so we can beg Jesus Christ, who is the Lord and is able to do all things, and we believe it. We want to live it as well. We trust the Lord of hosts. We want to trust Him. But disciples, disciples, who are waiting eagerly for Christ in the church of Christ, waiting upon Jesus Christ, glorifying, singing praises and, and songs to our Lord Jesus Christ. When he saw the weakness of men, the Lord interpreted this and said, O oh, faithless generation, this is for us, for the disciples. This was for the disciples. How long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. And so they brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus saw him, immediately that evil spirit convulsed him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed, follow, foaming at the mouth. The attempt of our Lord Jesus Christ isn't to deliver the son, the child, but it is for, the fa for him to teach the father to learn faith and the disciples to have faith as well. How long shall I be with you? He said. He is the teacher. He is the guide. And he helps men believe. Help us, Lord, as well. And so he asked this father, How long has this been happening to him? And the father answered from childhood. And often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But this is what he wants to hear first of all. If you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. If you can do anything. He's going well. He has reached a good level. But now he goes to, has to go further. If you can do something about this, have compassion on us. Then Jesus answered and said, If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. And so immediately the father acknowledged his weakness. He acknowledged, he understood that he was a man. And he cried out, and he said, I believe, Lord. But he continues and adds, please help me in my unbelief. This is who man is. This is what we are, my brothers and sisters. With the mouth we say, I believe, but in the heart we have unbelief. For that reason, this faith is not a human achievement, but it is the work of God. And we want God to work this work in our personal life, in our family life, in our church life. Because without this faith, we will not be able to be triumphant and we won't be able to walk. Without this assurance, this absolute uh, trust and faith that my help is, help is coming for the salvation of my family. Help is coming by the Lord who created the heavens and the earth. For the care of my work, for the care of my children, for my soul. Only Christ can keep me from all evil. Glory be to God. So when Jesus saw that a great multitude gathered, he rebuked the unclean spirit by saying, Deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him, and something very serious, enter him no more. That is what God does. He heals you and you never get sick again. 
because he always stays with you. When you wait with faith for his help. He delivers you and again you're never enslaved again. He makes you stop smoking and you never smoke again. That is how God does things. He protects your children and they are never in danger again. Hallelujah. What can I tell you, my brothers and sisters? This is the Christ that I want. This is the God that I want in my life. I'm very happy, very satisfied for everything that my Lord has done for me. I'm grateful to Him because if I turn and look back to my life, I will see His hand always being in front of me, always helping me, always protecting me. But now, Things are different. The Lord is coming. I heard that in 2013, the European Union, I don't know if it's true or not, uh, this is what I heard, the, the, United, uh, the European Union will become like the United States, one president, one nation. I don't know if this president is the Antichrist or not, he may be or not. But one thing I do know, my dear brothers and sisters, is that things are headed toward this direction. The Lord is coming. And I and my family and you and your family, I want us all to be ready for the rapture of the church. My brethren, there is no chance for us to save other people. There is no chance for us to set people free. And we have understood this well. But there is a chance for Christ to come and to reveal Himself glorious among us. And we want this. I want Jesus Christ to be glorious in my house, in your house, in your homes, in my life, in your life, in our church. And I know that whatever we want, God gives us. So today, my dear brothers and sisters, let us confess before the Lord that we are useless. As disciples, we are wretched. We have nothing good to show. And whatever good has happened in our life, Christ has done. But we want, from now on, to see the glory of Christ in our life. We want to say with our whole heart, my help comes from the Lord, the Lord who creates the heavens and the earth. My help comes. Let me not think, is it going to come or not? Has he heard me or not? But let me always think that the Lord will come because I am his disciple. Truly disciples of Christ. Amen, my brethren. True disciples of Christ. The child was set free. And the life of this family was changed. Just imagine. One night, the previous night, he was sleeping with a child that was like this. It was demon possessed. And the next day, his son was set free. That is what we want, my dear brethren. In one day, in one night, one moment, the Lord to change everything when He comes. So we make a small decision today and say, Lord, help, help us do this. We want to be your disciples. We want to follow you wherever you go. We not only want to hope in you, but help us hope and also believe in you. And to have knowledge and understanding, acknowledgement that you are coming for your disciples. And lay in our heart this absolute trust in your name, so that we may all say today, I lift up my eyes to the hills, whence comes my help? And let us all answer, my help comes from the Lord who creates the heaven and the earth. Amen, Lord Jesus.